Anyway, it was absolutely stimulating. I'm sure that we will have questions from the audience. So I open uh, the question part of our session. And I would urge the question to be as short and concise as possible and be directed to one of the panelists if it is possible. Who wants to take the floor? Yeah. Uh, my name is John Andrews. Um, thank you very much for very interesting interventions. Uh, in terms of the rivalry between China and the United States, I mean, China, I think, now has more trading partner. I mean, more countries take China as their main trading partner than do uh, countries take the U.S. as their main trading partner. So if we have this confrontation between the U.S. and China uh, at the political level and also at the economic level, um, is, the, are, is the world going to have to make a choice between China and the U.S.? Or is there a way of avoiding that choice? Uh, in other words, are we on an inexorable pathway towards some kind of divided economic and trading world? Or can we somehow avoid what I think would be a rather um, damaging and unfortunate uh, destination? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Perhaps I could ask Thomas to say a word on this uh, very stimulating question. And also uh, Yushi Ozoya, if he wishes. And you, Minister, uh, on this uh, very, very stimulating again question. Very concisely, Thomas. C'est effectivement une question très difficile pour moi, mais je pense qu'il faut essayer d'y répondre en distinguant euh, l'attitude des, des acteurs économiques et des entreprises. Et à mon avis, le choix se fera euh, très différemment selon les secteurs d'activité. C'est-à-dire qu'il y a des secteurs d'activité qui seront... Euh, qui sont au cœur de la confrontation sino-américaine, d'autres qui le sont moins. Et pour ceux qui sont au cœur de la confrontation sino-américaine, je pense en particulier à la, à la querelle actuelle sur les, sur les microprocesseurs. Euh, ça, ça c'est le, le premier aspect, c'est l'aspect entreprise. Le deuxième aspect pour les États, je crois que tout le monde cherche à éviter précisément ce choix. Alors il y a des phénomènes d'alliance qui s'accélèrent se, qui se, qui là aussi. Et la dernière en date, c'est l'annonce d'Ocus. Mais la plupart euh, des pays souhaitent précisément éviter d'être piégés dans cette, dans cette confrontation sino-américaine. Donc je répondrai en distinguant euh, les, deux, les deux niveaux. Merci beaucoup. Tayo, uh, you have the floor. Okay, uh, this question is frequently asked to uh, Korean companies in you know, whether you choose this or not. But uh, look at China. Uh, China has been a world factory for many, many years. Now it's changing because of high wages in China. So many firms are already leaving China to ASEAN and other countries. So for Korean firms, they are having a different strategy. They want to use China as a big market in the future, not the production or assembly site. So I think that they can actually readjust their, their destination. However, if the US want to have a decoupling by force or by you know, strong argument, then Korean firms are having some trouble. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Yushi, also, yeah, a word on that question? Yeah, thank you very much. It's a great question. And uh, I would say that majority of Asian countries are denying and rejecting such a choice. Let me uh, give you one example. Japan's single alliance partner is the United States. Uh, so we have to enhance our alliance relationship with the United States. But on the other hand, China is our biggest trading partner. Not just that, Japan has provided the largest amount of ODA to China in total. My Indian friend told me that the current powerful uh, 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 assertive China is part of the open culture. I wouldn't say that, but anyway, China is part. So this means that we need to create a inclusive regional order or inclusive globalization with China. At the same time, China needs to put some of the important regional rules. If China would not put uh, rules and uh, important uh, uh, rule of law, China would uh, dam damage its own national interest. So I think that this is the majority voice in Asia. 
but it depends on how much China is willing to respect such rules and uh, rule of law or <clears throat> international norms. And I'm optimistic more or less about Chinese behavior in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. So it was really indeed a very important question. We will take another question. Uh, I, I would like to reserve at least six, uh, I would say, uh, something like seven minutes for each of us to have the last word, but in 60 seconds, you know, <laughs> the main conclusion. So we will have a question, but uh, I want to terminate, terminate in time. So a new question from the audience, if possible. Yeah, over there. Please. Um, I have God knows how many iPhones. When I buy iPhones, who do I trade with? China or the United States? So? Can somebody answer this question? These things are made in, the, in China, I believe. But they're American. What I'm trying to say is that when I buy something that is made, that, that is made in China, but that is American, who am I trading with? Can I'm you, sorry, I'm not sure I got the question. My, 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 my point is that, is that they're, they're so integrated yeah, yeah. that you can't separate, separate them in, in, in many things. It is so profoundly intertwined that Precisely. it would be very difficult to disentangle. Okay, got the message. Uh, we had another question there. Thank you, sir. Um, uh, I would like to address my question to the Minister of Finland, which I thought was very stimulating, what she was talking about was the need for global solidarity and global cooperation in the light of the pandemic. But what I can say is, is that the European states have been extremely e egoistic in this particular field. And this is what we are, there is a great deal of inequality between the different countries, how they have provided the, uh, they have provided the means to, to, to fight this pandemic. It was very unequal and this is what we are very uh, sorry about the lack of global solidarity and the lack of global cooperation in this particular field. Thank you. Thank you. Can I say that you could address the same reproach to all advanced economy, not only, it seems to me, to the European economies. But you know what? We will start, okay. Matty, yes. <laughs> the conclusion session. Yes. Starting with you, you good. have a question. Thank you. I, you yeah, also good. Thank you. I'll, I'll do. We'll conclude. Good. Please. That is a very good question. I, I really think that we we need more solidarity when it comes to kind of action delivery. But of course, all the countries, I mean, the developed ones, have done their part. Also, the European Union, United States. So you cannot say that they there was no solidarity. But more could have been done. But I also can understand the ministers. Uh, in European countries and developed countries, they have to answer to their citizens. They need the vaccines rapidly. But also uh, answering partly to the question of, of uh, iPhones, where they are uh, produced. Uh, I mean, that really shows us how interdependent we are. The vaccines going also to developing countries, uh, they benefit the developed ones because of the global value chains, because of the raw materials. So in that, that sense, we really are on the same uh, boat. And I hope that now when we are, uh, I hope rather soon facing the end of this pandemic that we have also learned from this, that more solidarity also uh, is needed because it's, it helps everyone, also your own, own country. Thank you so much, uh, Marie. Uh, Wishy. 60 seconds for <laughs> your final message, please. Well, thank you very much indeed. Uh, actually, 70%, around 70% iPhone components come from Japanese. So this also tells that these uh, retail 
grow in this globalized world. And uh, maybe we have to maintain the current friendly international atmosphere to make the plus of the iPhone possible. Thank you very much indeed. Thomas, 60 seconds. Alors, 60 secondes. Peut-être euh, souligner le rôle des, absolument, à mon avis, crucial des plateformes systémiques et, et d'illustrer le changement de référence mentale qui était le nôtre en une génération. Je m'explique. 1996, euh, en marge de Davos, déclaration d'indépendance du cyberespace par John Barlow, qui montre l'utopie de libération de l'époque. Et euh, 25 ans plus tard, le terme de capitalisme de surveillance utilisé par Sochana Zuboff, qui montre à quel point euh, cette utopie s'est évaporée et invite à, à s'interroger très précisément sur euh, l'extraction des données, qui va être la tendance qui va continuer à croître. Et la, 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 la mondialisation va passer principalement par là. Et le rôle donc entre ces plateformes systémiques, les autorités publiques et les individus. Merci beaucoup. Mark Taeo, you yes, have the floor. Uh, again, 60 seconds. I want to uh, introduce the situation in Geneva uh, surrounding WTO. Multilateral agreement is almost impossible. So they are arguing that maybe plurilateral agreement among like-minded countries should be formed. And some people also oppose to their approach because it's not very good for the WTO system. But uh, yesterday or the day before yesterday, Brazilian ambassador argue that if you want to have a choice, we want to choice fragmentation with the plurilateral agreement or irrelevance. This, is a, this, this will simplify the situation at the WTO right now. We should choose fragmentation rather than in irrelevance for the future of WTO. <laughs> <laughs> Point very well made. Thank you very much. Bertrand, que diriez-vous? Yes, I think my, my point will be very simple. We have agreed six years ago on a global roadmap for the 21st century, a roadmap for an inclusive, sustainable and resilient economy, the Sustainable Development Goals, the Agreement on Financing for Development and uh, the Climate Agreement. It's impossible to withdraw an agreement today. So let's stick to what we have. It's not perfect. It's very difficult to handle. But it's been signed by everybody, so it's time to be serious about it. I think we have all the pieces of the puzzle. We never had that much money available. We never had that much technology available. We have all the institutions. We don't need to reinvent the G20, etc. They do exist. We have probably to make them work. It's easier said than done, obviously. And, and so we have to make the puzzle work. And let me conclude with two quotes, which basically highlight what I think is important to One is from a, a, a French writer from the 1930s, not very well known, but actually my daughter had to read it this summer for baccalaureate, Jean Giraudoux. Jean Giraudoux wrote a, a, a theater play in 1935 called The War of Troy Will Not Happen, which of course was an anticipation to the Second World War. Discussion between Odysseus and Hector. And of course, they see the catastrophe uh, coming, and they say the privilege des grands of the rich and powerful is to believe they can watch a catastrophe from the balcony. As we very well know, when the catastrophe happened, the balcony collapsed as well. So I think we are the balcony, and we, we see these things coming. We have hopes, and we have to make it work. It's our particular responsibility in this room. And my, my last quote is from Theodore Roosevelt, which I rediscovered in the US when I visited Mount Rushmore. I, I didn't know he was the fourth guy on the Mount Rushmore between Lincoln, Jefferson, and, and Washington. And Theodore Roosevelt is known for you know, the dismantling of the, of the uh, conglomerates creation of a consumer protection agency, the national park, etc., was accused of being revolutionary. And he said, I'm not advocating revolution, I'm advocating action to prevent revolution. And I think this is precisely where we are today. Thank you. Thank you very much for your quotations. Masoud, what would you say? I just want to make one point, which is that uh, if you take the next 30 years, in almost every field, No global solution will be possible unless a large number of emerging market and developing countries are part of that solution. Because that is where the growth is happening, that is where emissions will increase, that is where populations are growing. And the systems that we have to integrate them into the decision-making process do not reflect that. So we have to really find better ways of integrating 
those economies into the decision-making process. And we have to be more realistic in the promises we make because we are very good on targets and promises, very poor on delivery. And that's why you see in so many areas, we make promises. And if the last thing I say is, if you were to say, what is one of the real costs of the COVID crisis? It is a breakdown of trust. Many people in developing countries have lost trust in the functioning of the current multilateral international system because the promises that were made are not being delivered either in finance or in access to vaccines. And I do feel that we have to write that to redress that balance to be able to move forward to address the other issues. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Mazou. Uh, I would nevertheless, if you permit, mention the fact that thanks to globalization, we have many, many, many millions, billions yes, of citizens of that of went course. out of poverty. Definitely. So, so the, the, the benefit, course. the bounties we know exist, yes. but inequalities, abnormal behavior of the rich against vis-a-vis uh, -vis the poor are, uh, of course, at stake, as you so eloquently made the point. Let me <laughs> myself have a quotation, quotation for Noam Chomsky. And Noam Chomsky said, <laughs> no sane person is opposed to globalization, that is international integration. Surely not the left and the worker movements, which were founded on the principle of international solidarity. That's, of course, a contradiction, but, of course, good globalization, good global governance, fair sharing of the bounties are absolutely at stake at a global level between countries and within countries. Thank you very, very much indeed. I think we had a very stimulating session, and now we have to turn to the next session. All the best. Thank you. Thank you.